Strange Links and Happy Monday. As promised, I'm going to do my first Q&A video on here. I posted on my Facebook page, uh, my modeling page, as well as my personal page for some questions that I should answer for you guys. Um, if you see me looking back and forth, I have two screens open right now. On the left-hand side, I have the questions. Um, instead of having to print them out and reference them, it was a lot easier to say, you know, who was asking the question and what it was. My camera is super shaky, so let me try to stabilize this real quick for everybody. There we go. Alrighty. Let's try to get going. I'm hopefully going to try to use this as a new backdrop for videos. If not, then we'll change some things up. But I figured I wanted to go showing off my Night Before Christmas themed room. Um, I have a bunch of posters over here that you can't see. I got my Oogie Boogie pillow right here. Chillin'. And of course, my Jack Water bottle. I'm not obsessed, but I am. So if that was a question, your favorite movie, what are you obsessed with? It's Night Before Christmas. Um, just so you know. <laughs> It's definitely my favorite movie. Um, I can get this open. Um, I would say favorite, but maybe it's like second favorite. Probably couldn't hear that. It might be my second favorite because The Crow actually came out May 11th, 1994. For those of you who don't know, May 11th, 1994 is a very special day because it was the day I was born. <laughs> so... Um, I connect with it a lot because of that. It's also a great storyline. I have the comics for it, which are phenomenal. If you have not read them, I highly, highly recommend that you do so. Now let's get into the Q&A before I shake too much with this camera. Um, first we have Hannah. She asked a two-part question. The first being, I imagine where you're getting into character shoots. It's similar to an actor preparing for a role. In some ways, I imagine it might be more difficult for you because you only have a snapshot to convey your character's emotion slash purpose. What are some of the things that you do to prepare and practice for those snapshots of the character's moments? Not as much as I should. <laughs> um, a lot of times if I'm doing a cosplay, I will try on the outfit to try to get into character. I will try to pose in certain ways that I know that the character would. And if, say, I was doing Jack Skellington, one of the things that I did, uh, one of the NerdCon events that I sold at, I wanted to talk only in lines that Jack said in the movie. So I, I've watched the movie a billion times. I can quote the entire movie um, next to you, so I'm one of those annoying people, but, um, I, I try practicing them in the mirror, kind of how he says them, when the appropriate time would be to say them. The only downside was that because I was selling, there's a lot of questions that I couldn't really answer if someone said, well, how much is this? I had to sit there and be like, does he ever say five dollars? Because I'm pretty sure he doesn't. Um, so, <laughs> that didn't really work out the way I wanted it to. Uh, I definitely don't do as much practicing in the mirror as I should, especially because the full-length mirror that I have is right, as soon as I open my door, it's sitting right there in against the wall. But then on the other side, I have my dresser. So I have limited space to really work with that mirror. I can't really take it down and manipulate it to try to do other things. So it's really hard to do. I'm thinking about investing. They're really not that much money, especially in a college town. They sell them a lot over the summer in August for, you know, people moving into dorms. Uh, perhaps getting one to set up, you know, because I do have a large space in my room. I could put it right up against the bookshelf and have a decent amount of space to stand there and look in the mirror and to pose and to try different things out. I could try laying down with it tilted a certain way to see when I do like the certain pinup shoots how those look. Um, but that's something I'm definitely going to invest in more. I definitely check Pinterest. I will rewatch episodes or read the manga over again. Um, it's kind of what I'm doing right now to prepare for animazement. I'm kind of nailing down which characters I want to be and then doing some more research on how they present themselves. And especially if you look up on Pinterest or Google Images, the character, even if it's fan art, they usually portray very well that character. So using those kind of things um, to practice those poses that I see and those facial expressions in the mirror. Um, but I definitely need to do it more. Uh, and the part two for that question is, do you find preparation is better or more candid shots? I do a lot of candid shots. I don't prepare as much as I should. I would like to say I prepare a butt ton before I do it, but I really, really, really don't. And that sucks because I can see the difference when I have practice ahead of time versus when I leave. Because I think I talked about it maybe in another video. I hate walking away from a shoot thinking, dang, there was that inspiration on Pinterest that I wanted to try to do or there was that pose that I did practice and I thought looked really cool but in that moment sometimes you forget those things and you kind of get overwhelmed with everything going on especially at group shoots and you forget to do those things. Um, I do that a lot and it pisses me off. 
when I walk away and I'm like, oh, I really wanted it to come out this way or get the pictures back. And I see that I've done the same thing in a lot of them. And I was like, you know, it would have been really cool if I tried to do this instead. Um, but it's what it is. So more preparation needed. I do a lot of candid shots. Um, and preparing for the role is actually a lot of Google image shirts and investing in a new mirror. Um, Linda said, how, do you, how did you get into modeling and who is your biggest, biggest modeling inspiration? I got into modeling by accident, in all honesty. Uh, a friend of mine was supposed to shoot at a group shot that was in Greensboro. I lived about an hour away at the time, and I really wanted to kind of go with him because I thought it would be something that was really fun. I never really liked being in front of the camera. I kind of hated it, in all honesty. I was very nervous. I didn't like the way that my pictures turned out. I always thought I looked too fat in them, etc., etc. Um, so it wasn't really something I wanted to do, but I wanted to go to help him with it, and he invited me to go, and it was a fairy tale theme shoot. Um, so technically that was like my first, first one that I did, was a fairy tale one with, uh, Maria, who put together a group shoot in Greensboro. I decided to be Megara from Hercules, because I had the purple prom dress that matched it. I had Suggs from Sugar Coated Chaos make my little emblems that she has kind of on here and on her side belt for the costume. My hair was really long at the time, so I naturally just used that. There was a makeup artist that was there, Victoria, who did my makeup for me. Um, and looking back at those pictures, my face is like super serious because I don't know what to do. I'm just kind of like... And a lot of them, like big eyed, kind of like scrunchy eyebrow together. I have since then tried to do stuff with my eyebrows, so they're not as bushy as they were before. Um, I haven't worked on them recently, so ignore them. <laughs> but, uh, words. I went to that, and he actually ended up not going and shooting, which made me so mad that I went by myself, because something else popped up that he couldn't go to it. He was a military photographer, so that was what his job was when they went to different countries and did these service projects, was to document a lot of what was going on, and he wanted to expand his portfolio. Um, so I did that one, and it kind of was, it was really interesting. A lot of the photographers that were there afterwards stayed and gave us um, a lot of really good tips on things to do next time, how to practice with posing. Um, invited us to some other events that they were doing, and from there, I kind of tried to go. It was a once a month thing, and I figured I had enough. I could invest in a once a month driving an hour over there to do these shoots and come back, especially the one that we did was a steampunk themed, and everyone had so much interest in going to this shoot. Like, so many people wanted to go to it, and then when the time came, there was about five photographers, including Chen, he was able to go, and then only, like, two models that showed up. It was me and Will, and that was it. And Will was the makeup artist uh, boyfriend at the time and it was really funny because I don't even know if he had planned an outfit or he just went to Goodwill and kind of put something together thinking that because I know he did some modeling stuff but he wanted to do more of it and if it wasn't for him deciding to put together that outfit it would have just been me which would have been really weird but that was one of the first things I actually got published in an online magazine was that shoot. Um, my biggest, biggest modeling inspiration, uh, if you've checked some of my other videos, I have a video on here that's unboxing a present I got from the model Nikki Nevermore. She's an alternative cosplay model. She does a lot of like pastel, cutesy alien stuff as well as, well as some more gothic, dark romance kind of stuff. Uh, she does a lot of kind of like rave gear, not like the, the sexualized rave gear, but like the um, kind of like latex skirt kind of things. And I actually found her on Vampire Freaks. She was a model for them and a lot of the clothes that she modeled were the clothes that I was looking to purchase so I just noticed that she popped up a lot so I followed her page on Facebook and she was a super down-to-earth person. She actually started modeling some key necklaces for um, Art by Starla Moore who I was a big fan of at the time. I have like probably 15 of her keys. I've bought so many of them and I messaged her for my small business saying, hey Nikki, you know, I know that you've done stuff for Starla. My small business is a lot smaller than hers is but I could send you a necklace, I could custom make you one if you want for you to keep, if you want to incorporate it into some of your photo shoots. And she was like, yeah, sure. So I sent her uh, a little fairy dust file thing was like the first thing. I don't even know if I've ever sent you anything aside from that, Nikki, but um, it was, I was like fangirling the whole time. Like I have prints of her wearing them. Like I actually set them up at my con booths now. Um, be like, Nikki Nevermore wearing our products. Uh, and to promote her too, because she's so down to earth. She's super sweet. She's been through a lot uh, recently in her personal life, and if you want to know more about her, she posts a lot about it on her Facebook page. Um, but she was such a sweetheart, and she's probably the biggest, biggest modeling inspiration that I have. I would love to do shoots like she does, especially on the more gothic side of things, 
Um, a lot of the corsets that she wears are beautiful. The big tool skirts, like, they're just so dramatic and have such a flair to them. And the makeup that she does is, like, on a point. And I would love, love, love to learn how to do makeup like that. Um, I used to do it more often than I do now, and I'm hoping to get back into doing my makeup at shoots. But, um, definitely Nikki. And last but not least, Michael... Michael is someone that I work with, and he's kind of cheeky. He said, "Why? who do you think about most during modeling, and why is it me? Well, Michael, I usually think that it is a Friday or Saturday that I have a shoot, which is the day that you work car side to go, and I am missing out on the opportunity to talk to you and to bask in your presence. But I actually don't know what I think about during shoots. Um, Some of the better photographers that I've worked with will say something... Uh, like a certain emotion they want me to convey. Think of this kind of person, this kind of thing that happened to you. And if I really am able to get into that moment and remember that event or that person, I can portray that emotion better. So it kind of depends on what the theme of it is, um, more so than anything else. But I haven't... I, th I guess I think about the people that are there a lot, especially my friend Ashley. She is a phenomenal model. She's done so much with it. I really wanted to see her do a lot more um, in the future. But I think about her and what she's doing and how she would pose and her makeup because she does such great work. And she's usually there at a group shoot somewhere, rocking it in the corner. And we're just like, where's Ashley? Oh, she's been with Shabaka for about an hour now, probably getting some kick-ass shoots. Shots. Shoot shots. Um, if anybody's wondering, I did my cost test of Roxanne, which is also posted on here. Check out my cosplay. Um... And I might have just possibly changed and filmed two videos in one day because I could. Um, and my hair, I don't know why, it looks super red. I don't know if it's because of the Deadpool shirt um, it's being contrasted to or what. It's not red. Well, it's like a dark brown with like red undertones. It almost looks black. It's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, that's my first Q&A video. If you guys have more questions, I will do another one a couple months down the road. Hopefully if my channel grows. Um, yeah. Check out my cost test. I will have more cosplay tests in the future. I will add more to my thrifty diaries as time goes on and to show you some of the really cool things I've actually bought at thrift stores and how much I paid for them. And I hope to see you guys soon. So have a great day.